¿Cómo están, compañeros? Hello and good afternoon. Vamos a dar compañeros la and compañeras. Las personas presentes. We are now going to welcome the people in our program. Welcome everyone and thank you for being with us today. My name is Claudio Gonzalez and I belong to the Florida Farm Workers Association in the area of Homestead. Today, we are going to have a webinar to discuss the struggle of Nicaraguan women. And we're going to hear a report from the women who are members of the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative. And this organization has transformed their lives through their commitment to food sovereignty, agroecology, gender equality, and land rights. And they're a member of the Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo the ATC or Rural Workers Association, and it seeks to transform the lives of rural workers and their families and help them make changes in their lives and political, economic, and environmental areas for the better of their own lives. Also today, We wish to welcome two very important women in this movement in Nicaragua. First, I'd like to introduce Yara Sanchez, who is a young member of the Gloria Quintanilla Women's Cooperative of Santa Julia. She is the treasurer of the microcredit fund for young women in the community of Santa Julia. All right, you can turn on your microphone now. Hello, and I'm pleased to meet you. We also wish to introduce Marlene Sanchez, who is part of the international relations team of the ATC, the Rural Workers Association, and has supported a number of projects with the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative in the Santa Julia community. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, greetings to all. Many thanks to both of you for participating in this event today. And we will now see a video in just a moment. This is a video about the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative and the ATC, the Rural Workers Association. And this is part of the global peasant movement in La Via Campesina. The hosts of this webinar are the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign. The Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign is the leading organization in the United Kingdom supporting peace and progress for the people of Nicaragua. The NSC works with Nicaraguan organizations fighting for social, economic, and environmental justice and promotes public understanding in the United Kingdom of Nicaragua's battle against poverty. Mi nombre es Lea Marina Moncada, soy la secretaria de la cooperativa multisectorial Gloria Quintanilla. Eh, somos una cooperativa meramente de mujeres. Nacimos en el año 2008 como grupo, pero en el 2010 nos dieron ya la personería jurídica. Mi nombre es Eloísa García, 
Soy la presidenta de la cooperativa Gloria Quintanilla, me gusta mucho la agricultura, me gusta mucho la agroecología y soy coordinadora de la comunidad. Nuestra cooperativa se compone de 20 mujeres, toditas son productoras, todas producimos rubro de café, de diferentes rubros hay, tal vez una no tiene café, pero tiene una hortaliza, tiene los viveros de, de café que ahorita ellas los están elaborando. Nosotros nacimos de nuestra organización, que es nuestra ATC, digo nuestra porque es nuestra, de ahí nacimos, aunque la ATC desciende desde antes de los 80, nuestros antecedentes los dejaron esta semilla a nosotros para que nosotros sigamos el camino de nuestra organización, que nuestra organización es la que los ha hecho cambiar, porque antes nosotros éramos, tal vez yo no tanto, pero mi mamá, mi familia, los más ancianos fueron muy sufridos, muy golpeados, había mucho machismo, Gracias a estar organizada en nuestra organización ATC, hemos abierto nuestros ojos nosotros pues. Nos organizamos por necesidad, porque en aquel momento no había eh, luz eléctrica, no había letrinas dignas, no había escuela. Eh, nosotros estudiamos en una bodeguita vieja que casi nos caía encima, entonces quisimos apostarle un poco más a la educación y logramos hacer un instituto, un, no un instituto, no, una escuelita para la comunidad que los niños tuvieran un espacio propio. Entonces la situación era, era precaria, pues había eh, dos, tres familias en cada casa, en unos casos había hasta cinco familias. Y nosotras preocupadas nos organizamos por eso, para ver pues, y mejorar la situación de cada una de las familias de la comunidad. Nos convertimos como las mamás de la, de la comunidad. Y, y el tema para nosotros del machismo, erradicarlo en un 90%, en aquel momento estaba muy remarcado. Entonces ahora vemos mujeres que defensoras, eh, hemos logrado un empoderamiento integral de las mujeres porque vemos mujeres ahora cuidando, vemos mujeres produciendo, y vemos mujeres progresando y prosperando. Entonces eso ha sido un, un, un paso que hemos dado y para nosotras es muy importante porque vemos, estamos también eh, dándoles esa ser, es herencia a nuestras futuras generaciones para que aprenda, aprendan a defender sus derechos como mujeres y como niñas. Y nuestras mujeres en la cooperativa, pues, los hemos con una característica que nosotros mandamos a nuestros hogares. Nosotros decidimos qué se va a hacer en el hogar y eso sentimos nosotros. Y también los varones de la comunidad sienten que el trabajo que hacemos las mujeres es importante y es valioso y es rendidor. Porque a pesar, yo me levanto a las 3 de la mañana y son las 8 de la noche, yo no me he acostado y ahí estoy en la cocina. Y no se mira tal vez el trabajo que yo hago pero mi trabajo vale mucho. Esto no ha sido un trabajo fácil, no ha sido una lucha de dos años, no ha sido una lucha de, de muchos años. Y las mujeres estamos, este, o la comunidad y la cooperativa estamos ap apostando a que nosotras mismas podamos cuidar nuestra producción, podamos acercarnos más. más y este, lo más importante es crear conciencia de cuido. Nosotros somos una comunidad eh, productora, una comunidad que produce su propia comida, que produce sus propios alimentos y, y que produce sus propios abonos también. Entonces, este, venimos también creando esa conciencia de consumo de lo sano, consumo de lo propio de lo que uno produce en las parcelas. Nosotros hemos, hemos transformado nuestra comunidad, nuestra parcela, haciendo la, la agroecología en la comunidad, porque sí también los técnicos, nuestros hermanos de ATC, los han enviado muchos talleres. Hemos pasado por muchos talleres y seguimos pasando, pues, porque siempre los están implementando, dando las nuevas orientaciones, cómo trabajar la tierra, porque el cambio climático está muy loco. Entonces nosotros por eso trabajamos la, la agroecología, porque nosotros vamos a combatir ese... Esa, ese daño que los está haciendo el, el cambio climático los hace mucho daño, sobre todo en el café, que es el rubro mayor, mejor, el principal que tenemos en nuestro municipio y en nuestro país, pero el cambio climático los está afectando bastante. Pero nosotros sabemos cómo combatirlo a través de la agroecología. Eh, cuando nos organizamos, nosotras éramos monocultivistas, solo cultivamos solo granos básicos. O algunos nos enfocábamos solo en café. Entonces ahora tenemos 
parcela diversificada. En cada, cada una de las mujeres o cada uno de los productores podemos encontrar de 5 a 6 hasta 7 o 9 rubros. Tenemos una productora que tiene 19 rubros en su parcela. Entonces para nosotros eso es enriquecedor, porque cada, para cada época del año o cada mes del año hay un rubro, un rubro que te da eh, recursos para mantener la familia. Y lo más importante es que nosotros producimos nuestros propios abonos aquí. No es necesario ir, ir, ir y gastar tanto. Entonces la, todos los materiales que se usan son nativos de la comunidad. También estamos apostando en el tema de transformación de valor a la producción. Entonces lo estamos haciendo también con el café. Lo estamos haciendo con las semillas nativas de la comunidad, haciendo bisutería. Estamos haciendo jaleas de frutas de las distintas que se producen aquí. Nosotros le apostamos más a la agroecología. ¿Por qué? Porque de esa manera eh, cuidamos nuestra producción, cuidamos nuestra salud, cuidamos a nuestras a nuestra futuras generaciones. Tenemos que pensar también en ellos, porque lo que nosotros pasamos no queremos que nuestras futuras generaciones pasen. Y entonces queremos este, heredarles cosas buenas. Porque no, no queremos venir y decirles a los jóvenes, mira, aquí te dejé esta parcela este, destruida. Entonces queremos darle algo bueno para que eso, ellos se sientan agradecidos así, para que este, ellos también aprendan a querer su tierra, que no emigren. Porque muchas veces en, a la ciudad dicen ellos, yo me voy a la ciudad porque allá voy a ganar mejor. O me voy a otro país porque ya me aburre estar aquí. Y entonces este, involucramos a los chavalos a que ellos también aprendan y amen su tierra y que produzcan. Nuestras mujeres de la cooperativa pues los hemos dado a la tarea de que nuestra comunidad, también darles el ejemplo de la cooperativa a toda la comunidad que nacimos, eso se lo debemos primero a nuestro señor, pero primero a nuestra organización que es la TC, porque ella fue la que los trajo, que nosotros fuéramos unas mujeres con todos los talleres que los han dado. Y no, antes no teníamos tierra, nosotros íbamos posando en las haciendas, en los campamentos, éramos explotadas, éramos maltratadas, humilladas, si los querían correr, los corrían. Hoy no, gra gracias a la revolución sandinista de nuestro comandante Daniel, nuestra compañera Rosario, tenemos nuestras tierras, que es la comunidad de Santa Julia, es nuestra. Hemos logrado de que los hombres entiendan que las mujeres también pueden ser parte y pueden ser dueñas de la, de la tierra. Entonces ahora este, los hombres y las mujeres eh, tienen la oportunidad de tener una tierra mancomunada para que las mujeres también puedan ser dueñas de la tierra. Y las que no tenían, lo, lo, las personas que no tenían, los beneficiarios que no tenían pareja, pues les heredaban a, a sus hijos, a sus hijas mayormente. Y hemos logrado, ha sido un trabajo duro, pero que lo hemos logrado porque han, se ha entendido de que también este, podemos ser parte sin andar discutiendo, porque somos personas, somos, somos mujeres y hombres con derechos iguales y también los jóvenes también pueden aportar a, a mejorar su situación siendo dueños de la tierra sin tener el gran montón de tierra. Entonces, este, nosotras estamos ahí luchando siempre por todo. Siempre estamos este, viendo por la situación de toda la comunidad y, este, y estamos también trabajando no solo por nosotras, las mujeres, no solo por los niños, no solo por ellos, sino también por los hombres, para que entiendan que los hombres y las mujeres nacimos siendo y tenemos derechos iguales y oportunidades iguales. ¡Mujeres del poder! Sánchez, you have the floor. Hello and a good afternoon. I'm Yara Sanchez and I come from El Crucero, the community of Santa Julia, and I represent the women of the Gloria Quintanilla Women's Cooperative. We are a group of women who all plant our crops. We plant beans, avocado, platanos, lemons, and we try to plant all of the foods that we eat. The most important crop that we plant is coffee because that's the one that we use the most. I'm here and I'm also the treasurer of a group of, with 19 other women. And 
we 19 women received a, a loan were young women who wanted to move forward and thanks to the ATC, our organization, they helped us with this loan. And I'm part of that majority that was not able to work because I didn't have any savings. But this project was like heaven to me. And I began to launch my business as did the other women. And so there we are in the struggle and moving forward, thanks to the ATC. I don't know what else to tell you. We are women entrepreneurs, all of us in the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative. We are a work a group of women who organized ourselves and are working together. I think that's all that I have to say for now. If you'd like to ask me anything, I'd be happy to answer. Claudia speaking now. We're going to have a question and answer session later, but right now we would like to give the floor to the next speaker, who is Marlene Sanchez. Marlene, you may speak now, and then we will have time for questions and answers for both of you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, compañeros and compañeras here at this important meeting in which we are sharing information and experiences and our lessons learned. This is a very important opportunity for us that is offered by our two great friends, friends of the ATC and the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign. These two uh, great organizations are friends of the ATC, friends of Nicaragua, and also friends of food sovereignty, friends of agroecology, and friends of rural women. So I would just like to share the vision of these organizations that have hoisted our banner of struggle for a more equitable society, a society in which women and young people are a priority as we try to build something different. It's a society that shows us that another world is possible. This is what we have always said in the organizations of the CLOC, the Latin American part of La Via Campesina and in La Via Campesina. La Via Campesina is an international organization. I'm also a member of the ATC and we have uh, joined this international movement uh, through the CLOC, the Latin American coordinator of La Via Campesina. As we try to build a different society, it is a society that contradicts what capitalism has told us. For some 30 years in Latin America, we have been working in coordination and organized ourselves to build different strategies to strengthen our organizations and our grassroots and to strengthen the capacity and skills of men, women, and young people so that our organizations can continue to be tools of change, instruments of change that contribute to this other world that we are trying to build with women, children, and young people. In the course of all of this work, we have put forth the importance of food sovereignty. We are now celebrating the 25th anniversary of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is a strategy to allow peasants to live well, to establish good living in the Americas. This is what was proposed by our original peoples and our indigenous communities. In order to have living well, to experience living well, we need to build food sovereignty. And food sovereignty is nothing more than 
it's a lot more than just two words. For those of us in the clock and La Via Campesina has an entire histori history behind it. It's a process of struggle in which our organizations have proposed that we have access to land, that we recover our land and have control over our territories. In fact, to live in our territories because in Latin America, what we are confronting is the power of capitalism in a very strong structural system of land grabbing, of hoarding water, of hoarding minerals, and of hoarding all the common goods that are so important for this uh, concept of food sovereignty that we are building. So historically, we have been confronting capitalism. From the peasant movement of Latin America under the clock, that is what our struggle is to build a more just society through food sovereignty. Food sovereignty, I repeat, is the ability to have the land in our hands for the land to be controlled by the people who are producing healthy food, to be in the hands of the people who are taking care of the earth and protecting the common good. Food sovereignty goes hand in hand with agroecology. We say that agroecology is a fundamental pillar of food sovereignty. You cannot talk about agroecology unless it is linked to food sovereignty. Agroecology is where we recover our ancestral wisdom based on what the indigenous communities and original peoples have. That is why it is all linked within the structure of food sovereignty. We cannot practice agroecology without thinking of healthy food that comes from small producers, from peasant women, as the example we see in the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative here in Nicaragua. And there are many thousands of such experiences like this in Latin America. These are experiences that produce food locally for local communities. Agroecology is also recovers native seeds and is part of these lines of work that we have proposed through food sovereignty. We cannot have agroecology if we are using uh, GMO seeds or hybrid seeds. That would not produce the model of living well that we are promoting uh, from La Via Campesina. So I wish to tell you that these experiences that are being built from the grassroots to practice agroecology are examples of what we can do and what we are doing under the banner of food sovereignty, under the banner of letting women, young people, and communities that produce food have access to land. All of these land, these elements rather, invite us to continue to struggle for a change in our society. But it's not changing people by raising awareness, but rather a change in the structure of society, which means that we must enact laws and policies and we must do advocacy with our with our governments and international organizations, and also with international financial institutions in order for them to look at these experiences of peasant production. These are the experiences that create sustainable food systems throughout the world. So these lines of work and this strategy is so important for achieving living well. These are fundamental components of our struggle, and this is part of the banner that we are working towards. We need to advocate for these change in the structure and policies 
that help us protect our land and that promote local production and local marketing of food. Food sovereignty is a tool and an instrument of social movements. These are the kinds of tools that will help us move forward to achieve living well with uh, food sovereignty, with agroecology, and with the participation of people who have historically been a lower priority in global policies. We are the peasant movement because farmers and indigenous communities have always been engaged in this. And under neoliberal imperialist policies, there's no place for us. There's no place for peasants and small farmers. This is why we are proposing a more just society that has a different form of social organization and has social policies and social programs that are very different from what the neoliberal governments have been implementing in Latin America. So I just wanted to tell you about that experience and this history of struggle that we have in our peasant movement in Clock La Via Campesina in the ATC and what our sisters are doing in cooperatives such as La Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks so much to you, Gloria. Uh, Marlene, sorry, I got wrong your name. I kept the name of Gloria because the cooperative. Also, we are um, going to open the space for questions and answers. You can bring up your questions for Yara or Marlene. If you have some questions, you can send your questions here. We can see up here if someone, or you can send your questions um, text in here on the on the chat box if you want. Okay. We have a question here. Is the question comes from Steve Woodrow. What is the situation of cotton in Nicaragua? And what's the situation on the National Food Cell Sufficiency. How Nicaragua is food cell sufficiency. It doesn't say to whom is directed, but if some of you want to um, answer, if you want to elaborate on this, some of you. Uh, well, the person is asking about cotton in Nicaragua. Uh, okay, okay. Yes, I understood. I'm going to speak a little bit on a new issue here. The cotton in Nicaragua. Cotton production in Nicaragua used to be a very good harvest, a very good crop in the, the 70s and 80s. Nowadays, uh, Nicaragua doesn't uh, produce much of, and is not part of the of the programs uh, in the in the national economy. But I can say that Nicaragua has a very strong approach on cell food cell sufficiency. We have we are a country with a very farming uh, roots, and this has been this approach has been expanded after the, the agrarian reform when the Sandinistas. Um, 
uh, came to power in 1979, there were many changes in the governmental institutions. So the, the agrarian reform, they used that as a policy to expand the food production and land tenure in Nicaragua. I, this policy is very important to know that now nowadays Nicaragua produce over 80% of what we eat in this country. This has been a very positive situation because it's part of the situation where people have their own land and produce but also the people with land have access to social programs that are uh, aimed at uh, to strengthen the local farming. For example, we have a ministry named uh, Family uh, Ministry to promote farming, local farming. They only, uh, they also promote the, the, not just the production, but to transform the produce from the from the rural areas and they can be part of the of the national um, consumption patterns in the country so i can say that mainly we have all the social programs that are backing up the local farming production we also have a state policy that promote land access and and also not just land access but production of the land in in the hands of the small and medium farmers thanks so much and here we have another question they want to know uh, what are the plans the cooperative has for the next five years in our cooperative i can take that uh, well i believe that our plans are to continue planting continue producing and to have our own uh, food to make more advancements involve more the youth so that they continue producing to continue planting our land and just to move forward thanks so much we also have another question here how you have addressed machism how you have faced that i believe that this condition is almost disappearing because rural women have taken in their hands the, the slogan stop machismo stop abuse and men cannot apply to do things that you don't allow so i can see that it's diminishing for example me as a woman as a woman i say yes i have my rights i can i can express my views the men my partner cannot impose on me of what i'm going to say or do I always have thought that we both human beings have the same respect for the other person. It's not just the man who will indicate what I'm going to say. There is always a time to talk and agree or disagree. In that way, we will diminish machism. It's from the old past centuries, from the past years. We have to we have to keep our voice high and and express what we think. Claudia, tienes tu micrófono apagado. Claudia, do you want to say? How popular is uh, agroecology in Nicaragua? How many partners are engaged in agroecologic farming? Well, Nicaragua practically, it's mostly agroecology uh, produce. As I said before, uh, since the agrarian reform, many people had access to uh, land to produce and most of the families produce at 
small and medium level. One of the weakness through those years um, that in the first years of the revolution, the, the Green Revolution came to Nicaragua too. And there were many changes in the mental view of some Nicaraguan farmers because they bought the promises of the Green Revolution. Nowadays, we are up in a moment where we have a, a law. It's not just a law. We have a legal frame that is very important to, to develop um, agroecology and family farming. We have this law that is named the law for food sovereignty and nutrition. We have another law, 775, that is to encourage uh, product farming and agroecology. Then we have another law that is for the rural cooperatives that welcomes and encourages the small and, and medium farmers to produce organically in their own cooperatives and expand to more the areas for agroecology. There is a big potential for um, agroecology in the country. Nicaragua is very well known in the Central American region as the country that is leading the, the agroecology and also food production. And because here farmers really have, small and medium farmers have access to land. Also, I can add to that is that there have been some technical training to teach farmers how they can use um, organic pesticides and also via Campesina we, our organization we promote in Nicaragua we have schools in Nicaragua has one of the regional training center to train youth from the region and the Caribbean region and most of most of the students come from all the countries around Panama even Dominican Republic Mexico and others who come here to learn to tr be trained on agroecology and, and learn this experience on food production organically. And more now we are focusing more on healthy farming, healthy production. Thanks so much, Marlene. Also, there is another question, and this is specifically for Jara. In the mo in the movie, you are talking about um you were talking about teaching to the youth teaching the youth to love their land to um, avoid um, migration to out to other countries can you tell us how do you do that and how successful you have been well i will see um I can say that we have we have learned from our parents that connection to the land and to the crops we have and we learned to love our land and it, it's coming from our parents we are rooted to continue planting and continue growing organically in the youth are learn like that to move forward with those teachings from our parents. Thanks so much. There are many questions, Yara. Don't go away. Can you speak up of the changes between generations? Which are the main differences between your life and your in your parents' life some years ago? Well, my my parents, I I can say that they had a different life because before it was more difficult for them to live in the rural areas. Now it's much better for uh, this younger generation. In the times when our parents uh, grew, it was very difficult.
very difficult. Okay. We have more questions here. Another question is... I don't understand very well uh, talking about the Roy. Roy Bois, it's the problem in the coffee, the paste in the coffee, it's still a problem. Well, the... Roy boys, it's a sickness, it's a pest in the coffee plants. And pretty the person is asking for that. Yes, there are still some areas with that pest, not as in the past years where it was a national problem. It became a national problem a few years ago. Now it's, it has been very well managed and it's under control, the new coffee crops are, have been using organic pesticides and they have learned how to control the, that problem. Nowadays, it's not a national problem in the, in the coffee plantations. Okay. Uh, how many children do you um, attend in the, in the school that we saw in the video? In that school, we have over 20 children. Uh, we have a community teacher. She's the one who teaches in the children there. The, their parents bring them to school to learn there, to learn more, and just to be to learn new things, to be better in their lives. Maybe you, they are asking also if they have different school years. Well, this is a preschool, uh, community school. Pre it's a kindergarten for preschool. Uh, when the children grow, they go to another school farther up. This is just for the smallest kids in the community, uh, pre-kindergarten. Also, there is the question if you have something written, if you have written the story uh, that also appears in the video, because I would like uh, to introduce this to, um, to, to present this to my group of what you are doing on your economy and what is happening in the communities and all the learnings on agroecology. Yes, if you see, if you want to know the story of Gloria Contenia Cooperative, yes, there is a lot of material written. Erika has been coordinating with friends of ATC. They have been writing a lot with all the experience, the practices. Yes. You can see the stories there, how they have planted a coffee, made the coffee into uh, they have the store, they sell the coffee, they have transformed the coffee beans and they, they have been also producing other things for sales in the markets. There, so most of the experiences from this cooperative is written and Erika has been on that. Okay, muchas gracias. Creo que... Thanks so much. I don't see any more questions. For example, here, what, um, what kind of challenges that the pandemic brought to the small uh, family farmers? Um, in, Nicaragua, in Nicaragua, in the context of the pandemic, at the end, we heard at the end of 2019, in early 2020, the national government brought up uh, a plan to face the pandemic and that made possible um, to allow that small and medium farmers continue producing, planting, working, marketing their produce in the markets. 
the pandemic really didn't stop Nicaragua. People, people continue working, making advancements. Also, people were educated on, on the, the measures to avoid contagion. There was a lot of information. We learned to manage, uh, and to face the virus with information, education. We implemented all the measures to avoid it and also in the, the schools. There was a lot of communication among the people. The pandemic really did not really represent a huge challenge for families because families continue producing their food. They didn't stop. There were not really big issues here with the pandemic. Of course, at the, at the, at the national economy, there has been uh, some impacts, negative impacts, some importing not come. There was no international uh, traffic coming from other countries. So some raw materials uh, were, did not make it into the country. But producing farming, no, it, that wasn't uh, really a challenge for the families. Muchas gracias. Uh, no tengo más preguntas. I don't have any more questions in my chat box here. We, you can see the links here that Erica has shared the information. So if you want to find out more information there, if you want to learn more about the Women's Cop, it's there. Also, we, we will uh, ask uh, Erica to speak. She has some uh, messages, a uh, news from... Okay. Thank you, Claudia. I'm going to speak in English now, so I'll give people a few seconds to adjust their interpretation if needed. Uh, first of all, Claudia, thank you so much today for helping moderate this webinar. Claudia is from the Farm Workers Association of Florida, which is uh, a comrade organization to the ATC here in Nicaragua and is part of this international alliance of peasant organizations that's called La Via Campesina. Many of you might have heard about um, the ATC through um, its participation or its support in founding this international peasant movement. Um, also, thanks everyone for being here, for listening, for joining, for sharing these stories. Um, and a big thank you to Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign for co-hosting the webinar with us today and uh, taking on the very important task of organizing a lot of the, a lot of the tech for the webinar, which uh, many of us had, has, have had to learn in the context of the pandemic. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share a couple, um, uh, a couple of announcements. Um, Friends of the ATC, which is the solidarity network with the Asociación de Trabajadores del Campo or Rural Workers Association, of which the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative is a member of. Um, so Friends of the ATC is the solidarity network. We organize different kinds of opportunities, um, people to people exchanges to come here to Nicaragua um, to see with your own eyes um, the reality of Nicaragua, as well as to visit and interact with, for example, the women of the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative. Um, and I wanted to put in a plug for our next delegation, which is taking place in September. It's September 3rd through the 13th. We have a work brigade that's specifically going to focus on agroecology, as well as other cultural elements of the Sandinista Revolution. Um, which is something that's very important um, here to the context of Nicaragua and also to the ATC as an organization that was born out of the context of the Sandinista popular, popular revolution. Um, I will share when I stop talking, I'll share a link um, to all of our delegations that we're currently publicizing. Please come if you can. It's so important right now in the context of um, uh, telling the true story of what's happening in Nicaragua, what you saw in the video, what Yarda is sharing about, what Marlon has shared about also for the context of Nicaragua. There are a lot of really amazing things happening here that you uh, often don't see in the international media. Um, and we also have an information session that's taking place next week on th Thursday, June 24th. Um, they're gonna be better for the folks joining us from the US than the folks joining us from the UK. It's gonna be at 5 p.m. US Pacific time 
8 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. I'll also put in a link there that you can join. Just sign up for this delegation information session and learn more details. Um, and then two more things I wanted to say, um, two more announcements. Um, Brittany, who is part of the staff for Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign, but did her internship in the Santa Julia community with the Gloria Quintanilla Cooperative, has so kindly put some links for a really beautiful publication of five testimonies from women from the Santa Julia Cooperative there. Um, it's available both in English and Spanish on the Friends of the ATC website, and you can access it directly from those links. Please read them and share them with others so you can hear more about the stories of the, of the women of the cooperative. And we'll also reshare the link to the video so you can share that too. Um, I know some people were asking specifically about resources. Um, the last thing I wanted to say um, is just to keep the, um, we, we wanted to have a few more women from the cooperative join us, but um, one of the women who some of you might know, I say this because I see a lot of people who have been there, um, Doña Irma has, has fallen sick, has fallen ill and is in the hospital. And so we have a lot of women from the cooperative that are uh, attending to her and making sure she's okay. And um, we keep her in her, our thoughts um, and in our prayers as well, Doña Yerma, um, who is uh, a very well-known woman, very well-known woman um, in the cooperative. So anyway, thank you so much for for joining us today. I see a lot of our friends at the HC interns. I see people have joined us in different activities. I see members of Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign and Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign Action Group, um, uh, the ambassador. The Grogan Ambassador in the UK, uh, Giselle, nice to see you here too as well. So anyway, thank you so much. And um, I will now pass it back to Claudia. Uh, it's Helen from the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Helen. Okay, um, just to say, really, really sorry, but uh, about an hour before, I, about an hour ago, our water went off, and also our internet connection has crashed. So I'm. I'm, I'm uh, connecting by phone. Um, so just to say, well, my name's Helen, I uh, work with the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign uh, here in the UK. Um, just first of all, to say really good wishes, speedy recovery to Donya Irma, who I met on the Friends of the ATC delegation a couple of years ago, and also from our organization, Solidarity Greetings uh, to the, from. Uh, from all of us uh, to the A uh, to the ATC, um, and especially to the cooperative uh, Gloria Quintanilla. I just wanted to say something really, really quickly about COP26, uh, which is happening, which is the big climate change conference that's happening in Glasgow in Scotland in uh, November, where they're expecting around 30,000 people from all over the world. So that will be representatives of government, but from civil society organizations. Uh, so the Nicaraguan government will, representatives will, will be there, uh, but also the ATC and La Via Campesina will be represented, represented um, as part of a, of a, of a delegation. Um, I just wanted to go back a little bit to something that the UN General Secretary uh, Antonio Guterres actually said at the end of last year. And the reason I want to mention this is that what he said in December last year was what Paul, Dr. Paul Okist, the Nicaraguan representative to numerous uh, climate change for a, for a de decade or more, um, was actually saying 10 years, 10 years ago. Uh, so he actually said that, well, he warned that uh, uh, the humans are waging a suicidal war against the natural world, which is devastating our planet. Nature is striking back with gathering fury. Uh, biodiversity is, is uh, collapse, collapsing. Um, and just to pay, pay tribute to Paul Oakist, who many of you may know, um, actually died tragically in April this year. 
um, and just to pay tribute to the probably millions of uh, hours he must have spent in extremely difficult uh, international meetings representing uh, in Nicaragua on questions of climate change. Um, in terms of, uh, yes, yeah, so um, in terms of what NSC is actually doing, uh, well, well, what we're trying to do is to, um, well, focusing on COP26, but looking at the impact of the climate crisis, but we're using Nicaragua as an example, particularly the two hurricanes that struck Nicaragua uh, in November last year. Um, but also we're reflecting Nicaragua's, the government's position on COP26. And I think one of the things that particularly stress is the whole question of climate finance. Uh, that, that means uh, climate finance that should be available, like at least $100 billion per year for countries uh, such as Nicaragua to adapt, mitigate, um, but also as uh, reparations for losses and damage, loss and damage as a result of uh, the climate crisis for which uh, Nicaragua does not bear any responsibility. Um, so, and then the other part of our work is obviously reflecting the, the position of the ATC and La, and La, and La Via Campesina. Um, calling for well, food sovereignty, agroecology, gender ecology, um, and arguing that well, the neo-colonialism neo is, uh, uh, is the cause of the crisis that we faced. Um, and, and it's kind of all encompassing in terms of how it's affected every aspect of our lives. And therefore, uh, what we need to do is address, address the root causes um, by by focusing on uh, by focusing on other things that have already met, already been mentioned um, in this uh, in this in this webinar, particularly the the focusing on systemic change. Uh, it's not not good enough to come up with false solutions uh, to the climate crisis. It's need, uh, what needs to happen is to address the roots of it. Um, so if uh, people in the UK uh, strongly encourage you to enjoy, join NSC um, and to have a look at our website for the information that we're putting out um, about, well, particularly focusing on the question of climate justice. Uh, but I think, I think this is a term that's being much hijacked now. Um, and if you look at the look at the reports of the G7 conference in England um, last week, you'll see uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, talking about climate justice. Um, so it's really, really important, I think, that all of us working on this area actually define what we mean by climate, climate, ju climate justice, um, um, in including the, the Nicaraguan government's argument if, about what, what climate justice is, um, but also the, the, um, the definitions of, of the um, La Via Campesina. Um, so, I mean, there are, there's a lot of mobilizations going on in the, in the UK. So people in the UK are, uh, definitely use the material that we're, that we're publishing, use Nicaragua as, a, as, a, as an example. If you're involved locally or if you're involved in regionally or nationally or in specific organizations, um, we're working around climate justice and uh, up, leading up to COP26. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so that, that's, that's it for the moment, but it's going to be a very, very busy time ahead. Um, and we hope that uh, somebody from Nicaragua will be able to join the La Via Campesina uh, delegation to COP26. Then it'll be a chance to, for, for us to meet that person as well. Muchas gracias, Ellen. Eh, hemos estado recibiendo información muy valiosa. 
la vía campesina. Thanks so much, Helen. We have been getting good information from Vía Campesina, and that's a very good source of information, and we can share what we get there, but also we can um, use it and learn from them. We can use this presentation also to talk more about agroecology and what this means in this, in the, the approach of the women of the Gloria Quintanilla Cop. I can take some words from our comrades. If we are united, we are strong, but also we have to give the time and dedicate to what to, uh, to our goals and respect women as part of Mother Earth. And they have been very sí. successful in the changes they have aimed. And they can see that after that, if they are united in one struggle, they can succeed. Today we had had a very good and open um, talk with our comrades who share with us the information, their, ex their experience. And we were, we are Via Campesina, uh, our a neighbor organization. We wanted to say thank you to all of you who came today to participate. If, if someone wants to say a few words at, at the end, you can share uh, them on the chat box or some of our comrades here who just spoke, if they can say a few words. Also, if not, we will just take the time after this to think of, of on, on all the information we got today. Also, we want to say thank you to our two interpreters. Thanks so much for being with us in doing the interpretation and making this meeting possible. Thanks to also to Jara and Marlene, Erica, Helen. Well, uh, I just wanted to say a few words from the Via Campesina Clock and from ATC Nicaragua. I wanted to say thank you for this space you opened up for us because we promoted our, our work experience and share with you and we also share with you our struggles. Thanks so much and greetings to everyone today. Also, thank you for this meeting today, for listening to us, for getting your messages, and I want to send you special greetings, hugs too. Thanks so much. Someone has a hand. And maybe Giselle, the ambassador to the UK, Nicaraguan ambassador to the UK. My name is Giselle Morales. I am the Nicaraguan ambassador to the UK, and it has been a very good pleasure to have chair with you in this seminar today. I know it was organized by the Friends of ATC in the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign in the UK. I want to say thank you to all of you who participated today, but especially to the two Nicaraguan comrades who were here with us and share with our, their own experiences. 
and how they how their lives have been connected to the agroecology and their struggles Cloudy. in the land access also claudia yara marlin and erica please give my best to doña irma can get well soon i just remind you that we continue in the struggle to keep with the flags of Paul Keist in climate justice. And we continue his legacy, legacy defending our Mother Earth in all the international events we go to. And I expect that justice and repairs can be um, a good success in our countries. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to everyone.